Hello. Hello. <laughs> How can you look at this? I got something like a can. Yeah. And uh, this is a, this is a first. Well, it's it's very rare. I'm not. I don't drink- think I've ever seen you. You didn't even drink Guinness in Ireland. Did no, you? but well, firstly, I'm not drinking cider, which is unusual. Yeah. And I'm going. I don't like Guinness. <laughs> um, but I've ordered a tiny rebel stay puffed marshmallow porter now I'm purely only buying this for two reasons yeah well you're buying this sorry is because it's got a Ghostbusters reference there's the stay puffed marshmallow man on it and because I'm tempted in the, the idea of marshmallow being sweet mm. that's the only two it, reasons I think it goes well the, in my head the, the imagery is good yeah I'm going to pour it then. yeah Oh, so I've got oh. most of it on the table. That's dark. It's like Bovril. Mm. That's darker than yours, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pouring this. You tell people what you've got. Okay, so I've got an Einstock toasted porter. Now, I think I've had an Einstock lager before, but it, it might not. I might not have done. I just The name sounds familiar. I haven't had a put toasted porter before, though. It smells a little bit whiskey, like this, to be honest. Do you reckon? It smells. It's, it smells like Guinness <laughs> to me. It's, to me, it smells like a Guinness with a drop of whiskey in it. Which is cool. That's got a, a cocktail there, isn't it? Oh, I made that up. No, it's whiskey. It's yeah, Guinness. Shandy, isn't it? good, good, you know, I'm thinking of Guinness and Bailey's. <clears throat> the toasted doesn't come until later. To begin with, it tastes a little bit like a, a, a slightly diluted Guinness. Only slightly. Yeah. Not as, not that Guinness is thick, but Guinness is quite creamy, whereas this is a little bit more like okay. a <clears throat> squash type texture. But then, yeah, just at the end, the, on the sort of middle of your tongue, you get a little bit of biscuit. Scott? I'm going to be brave now and drink mine. Go for it. Huh? I'm proud of you. So, for in, the initial taste is sweet, and then and then the the bitterness of the. I'm getting quite technical now. Listen, yeah, check yeah. me out. But it's, it smells sweet. It smells um, a bit like vanilla. It's weird here because it's like an initial taste is like squash, mm. but then afterwards it's the bitterness. No, me. I won't try it on this side. It smells sweet, doesn't it? Yeah. It does smell. It's definitely yeah, it does smell. have a bit of a marshmallow to it. Yeah, I can t- I'll, I'll definitely taste marshmallow with it. Mm. It's definitely sweeter than this one. Is it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it suits me that the sweetness suits me. Definitely, of the two, you, you made oh, the yeah. best choice yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. We haven't said where we are, either. No, we haven't. We're in a bar called Chaplin's. Right. Yeah, you can just about see that in the sign behind Paul's shoulder, the chaplains, as in Charlie, the big statue of the uh, one of Paul's heroes. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. Um, quite a eccentric, bohemian-style yeah. decor. Yeah, very much so. Um, we're in the seaside town of Boscombe, yep. near Bournemouth. Yep. Uh, yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers, buddy. Nice to, nice to be in a pub again. Nice to be outdoors. Nice mm. to be away from Zoom. Yes. Real we've life. Had our temperatures checked. And we're, we're good. Yeah, we're all good. We're in the bubble. Yeah, so. Although I have just seen a sign that says no camels. Oh, dear. So we have to keep secret about your nick. Yeah, so <laughs> I have a nickname for, for, the, for the benefit of the know. Do they? Yeah, they know. Um. I was going to say something, but I can't remember what it was. Can't be that important. Oh, it was probably that we're starting a new, a new run. This, this is, is 101. episode 101. Yeah, not room 101. Episode 101. The second starting century. The, new century. Mm. Mm. the difficult second hundred episodes. <laughs> no, so, we're yeah, we got the uh, st- we set the bar high. Yeah, and we. I did feel a little guilty, but I've rationalised it and I've come to terms with it. What about what? 
So I did ask on LinkedIn for any particular questions that oh, yeah. I wanted us to cover in our 100th episode. But then we actually got together a lot quicker than I thought we would. Yeah, it happened. Um, all of, all it was a bit of a spur of the moment thing, so we didn't get a chance to cover them. Uh, so the way I rationalised it was I would rather celebrate continuing on mm. from the 100th episode. Mm. Uh, like a batsman doesn't want to be out on the 100th, do they? No. They want to, you don't want to they, end. They often they want to carry on. They often, well, yeah, but often what happens yeah, is they, they have that sort of relief of getting and to get out early, the early and they the lose early, their concentration. Yeah. Get out in the early, but, yeah, early the best go again. So we are going again. And We're going strong, are we? And we are listening to our... Uh, listening to listeners. To our listeners, yeah. yeah. Um, our stakeholders. Our have you got these questions I haven't. So I'm going to rely on you because my phone is doing the video recording. Okay. We've got quite a few, though. It's good. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, so yeah 23 comments. Yeah, 23, 23 comments. So you're going to pick them... Some of them are mine. ...random or...? Well, I think we both. Let's go with one that we both saw um, straight away that we both liked. Okay, I can't remember it, but go on. This question was uh, from Maya Zwicky. Yeah, I think I've said said Maya. her name right. Maya, Maya, Maya. Yeah. Um, and she said the question. She just she said things you have said or did uh, that you thought might get you fired. Okay. And <clears> what <throat> happened? And okay. so, I assume, so I looked at this I thought that's a great that is that's what I imagined the podcast would be about Did you? yeah well just telling stories that yeah. we really shouldn't share getting ourselves into trouble <laughs> uh, is there a statute of limitations on this I suppose they can't sack us now a bit late now um, I mean I think the closest you got to being sacked that I'm aware of yeah is the fact that you were in a in a company of over a hundred thousand people, yeah, you were in the top ten, yeah, of people spending the most BT money, yes, on expenses, on expenses, and you were at the time one of the you were only the third grade, yeah, in sort of seniority. Yeah, the so I was a mere, um, you know, pawn in the whole. Game of chess. Yes, yeah, like. yes. You were, you weren't, you weren't vying for the Iron Throne. No, you were an extra. I was, and I got a phone call. Yeah, I remember from, it. I remember from that. the head of finance. Yep. At BT. You um, were quite young at the time as well, weren't you? And I was petrified. I think yeah. you, were, oh, you were in the oh, office. I was, I was right behind you. <laughs> And I was laughing absolutely at in hysterics. <laughs> I was telling everybody to come around and listen. I was that supportive. As a true um, friend for you. So I had to basically, quite quickly, explain out and rationalise why I was spending money on flights, hire cars, taxis. This is in the days of... Um, uh, what was the name of it? One, one View when I was going to Glasgow every week so I was flying to Glasgow on Monday mornings and coming back on Thursday nights staying in a hotel staying in a hotel four star hotel Pro- more than likely Jeff three course meal every night and breakfast and breakfast taxis and no wonder I was running up a fairly large expense <laughs> so they were fine with it but it was a bit of a nerve wracking phone call was that was I close to being fired? I don't know. Probably close to being so. This is so here's escalated. My, well, yeah. So here's my um, why I think you, it was close because that got the attention. And if they had chosen to just investigate your expenses, yeah, is there one thing in there that you probably shouldn't probably, claim yeah. for? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, if they wanted to get rid of you, it would have been a good excuse. Yeah. yeah. But um, it was all above board. And it was all I could for the right reasons. Out. Yeah. Um, and for someone who, with a young family, was being asked to work away from home a lot. I didn't have a young family at the time. Okay. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, I was uh, working away from home a yeah. lot. And um, that's probably why you didn't have a young family. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I hardly ever saw my wife at that point. So, what about uh, you? You must have had probably the one that I actually could have been really fired for. Yeah. Uh, I actually included in one of my books, but didn't say it was me. Oh, um, this is like a this is like a confession. Yeah. Um, we. I was incredibly frustrated with this is the theme uh, <laughs> with with the speed of action or inaction within within the company, and it took something like six months to get a new server yeah. through the process, and we were trying to deliver something on a monthly basis, and we needed a huge spec spec that for the server and we didn't know what the requirements were going to be and all this kind of stuff 
I only just wanted to test some stuff. Yeah. So I had a limit on my corporate card, and I went down to PC World with a developer and bought the best machine they had. Mm-hmm. Brought it back to the office, plugged it in, put it on the network, and we tested the development instance of, uh, of a new service. Yeah. Uh, no security, no firewalls, um, no protection whatsoever. It's probably breaking all sorts of BC policies. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was probably still this now. You shouldn't, was, you shouldn't have done it. Sh- well, <laughs> so should I, so this and this is a good point actually. It's a good agile. It's a good so scrum I was, master. you know, yeah. And we've we've talked about it, written about it, and say if you're not prepared to lose your job, you're not at your most effective as a scrum master mm. uh, or a change agent. And because of that, the conversation about the lead time. For service, you, you was must have even at the time you could you felt you could justify what you did. Yes, <laughs> but I feel I can justify almost anything. Like that. <laughs> that, that it's kind of a, almost a psychopathic characteristic of mine. Um, I can justify almost anything. Yeah, um, but <laughs> Jeff will know. Jeff will know. Yeah, but um, no, I. It was kind of reckless. Hmm. But also, do you I regret think, it now? No, 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 because I think good things came from it. Yeah. Um, did we do everything we could to mitigate the risk? No. Did we do something? Yes. Mm. Um, and we were pretty sure that yeah, it was it was only a development instance. It wasn't going to be going out live outside of the company firewall mm. um, but yeah it was it was a silly thing to do but it was something that actually was really really useful not just for the project but also for the conversation about why someone is driven to those methods yes. yeah, yeah. to actually how make bad some progress must, how bad must things be that, that forced you to do that yeah um, the thing I've said before and it's, it's, it's an old story but it wasn't really a sackable offence but I um <laughs> worked my hours. Yes. When it when it wasn't socially acceptable to work, just work, just work hours. your hours. Yeah. I walked out and um, so they call that working to rule, don't they? Yeah. We've talked about it before, but yeah, the idea of, you know, not expecting other developers to work beyond what they're comfortable, what they need to but mm. but following what everyone else is. So I, I took a lot of Feed, feedback for that. I don't think it's it's nearly a sackable offence. Trying to think of anything else that I've done. That I well, we um, well, I had, I had a bit of a run in with um, Mike. We'll call him Mike because that was his name. Um, I think I don't think you were in the office at the time, but I didn't tow the line on something. I t- I think I told my product owner at the time that we couldn't deliver on a certain time, a certain mm. date. So I was hauled over the coals for that and, yeah. t- and told you've got to find basically I didn't tow the line for the department I should have found a way to caveat it with we, we, we'll do our best yeah. but instead I just said oh, we can't do that we can't do that yeah. we <clears throat> we did get a little bit of attention for some of our team team development activities yeah so quite often we would have Friday afternoons <laughs> off Nig- Nigel will remember these. Go to the cinema, watch the new Star Wars release. Yeah, you know, as a team. Yeah. Um, I, no, I wasn't really a big fan of Star Wars, but I came along anyway, just to, to be a team player. Just to be, you know, all around great guy. Yeah, uh, and have the afternoon off work. But we didn't miss. Yeah, we didn't miss any deadlines. And I think the morale we got and the bond that we had as a team. Yeah. More than outweighed those. Fridays was a pretty unproductive day work wise. Quite normal, isn't it? Yeah. Long, long, long breakfasts, playing five a side football for two hours. For lunch. For lunch. KFC. Mm. And then maybe a cinema trip. Yeah, we didn't get a lot. You would never, we would never have been able to do a retrospective on a Friday in those days. Well, well yeah, but we probably did, didn't we, in a way, in the pub. Yeah, maybe. After the cinema. Mm. Or even over breakfast. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a facilitated, structured one, but we were 
Change it's probably a little bit more of a moan. Yeah, yeah, a whinge. But then one of us would typically wear the hat of glass half full, what are we going to do about it type thing. Let's yeah. go to PC World, Yeah, for example. Okay, all right, Maya, but hopefully there's there's some... Uh, you've got yeah. some... Yeah, we've, we've all been there. You've got something on us now. Yeah. Okay. Where would we be now if Agile or Scrum didn't exist? What would have replaced it? What would life be like in 2020 without it? Good question from Evangelo Panagi. Hmm. I'm not sure I have a good answer to this one because my instinct is it was inevitable. And that's not because I necessarily believe in fate, but I think it was just the natural response to how things changed. I'm sure there were some points along the way if you look back at the time where we branched into this particular universe but it would it might have been called something different but I think the idea of tackling problems in small chunks was just a necessary yeah I think you'd have seen a lot more companies that just do their own thing yeah. um, and you end up with probably much more of a common sense kind of localised way of doing things that gets you round certain issues or gets you round certain processes. I'll tell you what, there you go. Is it, I'm taking what you're saying there and it sparked an idea for me. Yeah. Is that <clears throat> rather than a set of values and principles that spawned an industry mm. and frameworks, I think you'd have had something along the lines of the Spotify model come first. Yeah, like a company that... Success so follow them, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, or, yeah, or you'd have had some really big companies like BT and Kodak and whatever go to the wall because they didn't change, right? But it'd be like a shop and all type <laughs> thing, like, uh, yeah, this would happen to you if you don't yeah. do something about it, yeah. But I still think something would have emerged because of this need to follow something like, let's like say, a company, it could be a company or it could be. A, a paper or, or something that because people need that kind of inspiration that yeah. that that, um, that north star don't they? well in any sort yeah people would people prefer something to some kind of recipe follow yeah some kind of order in the chaos yeah something to blame but also something to say I don't have to make my own mistakes so I'll copy your mistakes or I'll copy your successes. It's well, a, it could, maybe we're all wrong. Maybe we'd still be doing waterfall now. We'd, we'd all hate our jobs. Maybe we well, would be. That's the other here. option, isn't it? The work would change, but I think I don't think that's the case. I, I, so either the the way you do the work changes to meet what the work is, yeah. Yeah. or you only take on work that you're capable of doing, yeah. and your processes allow you to do. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's the case because the work. No, it's market conditions. Market conditions for me this had to be the only way it could go. Mm. Maybe that's survivor bias. I don't know. Good question, though. Thank you, Evangelo. So, uh, question. question three. Oh, is it three? This is the third one. Oh, yeah. This is from one of our patrons. One of our patrons. Per Christian Muller. Yep. Um, I've picked his non agile question. Okay. So he gave us two questions. I've picked the non agile one. Uh, it would be fun to hear about what the two of you would be doing now if you weren't agile coaches. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, I was an accountant. My first job was as an accountant. I think I would... Hmm. Have you got a quick answer to this one? Do you know? Yeah. You do know. Okay, go on then. I think I'd be a teacher. Okay. Can I change my mind? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to try this raspberry and vanilla stout instead of thing. Thank you. Cheers. Um, I think I'd be a teacher by now. So I had a bit of a... I don't know if we talked about it before. I had a bit of a wobble. Do you remember this wobble I had? Yeah. I had a wobble um, early 2000s, I suppose. Well, probably when I first met you. And I was considering a, a total career change about re, retraining, reskilling as a teacher. This is before I was training Scrum, I think. It must have been. I just this is when you were still a job I think as <laughs> a job guru. Um, either that or I was doing basic um, project management, probably for fast track. 
but I just wasn't very happy and I wasn't doing things that I enjoyed so I was looking at a career change I think had I not done that I'd have probably by now retrained as a teacher mm. I, did, I think I would have regretted it based on what my sister as a teacher is going through now and the amount of work she's having to do but I think yeah. that's a cool can what have we got? Would you have been uh, like a secondary school teacher than a subject or a primary school teacher? No, I don't know. I, 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 I think. Um, I don't think I. I think I'd have been a primary school teacher, or something, something like that, or maybe older primary school children. Yeah, I, I genuinely think I was looking at courses and looking at reskilling and training. And, yeah. mm. What about you? <laughs> Honestly, <clears throat> I don't know. The only the, the only time I considered a career change was was to sort of move into something sort of therapy based. Um, I probably would have. So, I mean, I just basically said yes to stuff in my career. Yeah. Apart from the accountancy, which I said no to. Yeah. Um, I basically, whenever an option came up, I pretty much said, "Yeah, all right, let's give it a go." Yeah. So it would have been whatever came up next. Um, so yeah, it'd have probably been some kind of. I never had a, a specialism. Yeah. So yeah, having never worked, no, I mean, worked at BT for a long time, and never knowing how a phone works, or never knowing how the cloud or networks work, I wouldn't have been able to be a, a special specialist in any kind of area so it would still have been working with people oh. yeah I, or you know I did I did always want to own a pub we we had an idea about opening a piano bar didn't we yes that never yeah, yeah, or a no. puzzle room we had so many ideas that we thought that's it. probably over too many drinks I even found a pianist you did you had a whole business model we were, we were scouting out uh, venues I think it was probably the right decision not to do it. <laughs> yeah, not, can't do, yeah, not, not going to be um, particularly popular right now, I wouldn't have thought. Gone to the wire. All right, we've got time for one more question, I think. <coughs> All right, here we go. Um, I had it a minute ago. Let's come back. Oh, come on, where is it? No, not that one. Ah. Um, I've just this is from Amy Lane I've just heard another um, just heard about another major company eliminating the scrum master role as useless perhaps to address this and any agile uh, relate, any related related agile is failing topics so why would a co company call the scrum master role useless perhaps they are it could be gen that, that maybe they are crap scrum masters maybe maybe it's a uh an infertile environment um, or it could be that they're asking questions that don't want to be answered maybe they are like we were doing causing a bit of a disruption and um, themselves fired. but it's also it's maybe a lack of, we've said this before a hundred times but lack of understanding about what they're expecting of that role they're useless because they're not very maybe they're great scrum masters but they're expecting them to be something else yes they're genuinely trying to do long term slow burning coaching of approaches but they want fast results uh, management driven results yeah I think I don't have enough evidence yet but the anecdotal evidence that I'm picking up is that the organisations that are coping well with the huge disruption they're facing are the ones that have that kind of servant leader type role with their teams. Um, teams that are a bunch of um, functional specialists pulled together by a puppeteer project manager mm. are really really struggling right from a kind of burnout perspective and a, you mean the, and an anxiety just perspective. generally or because of the current situation I think it's been exacerbated okay by. so you think um, the, the, what I've heard is 
people's days are being filled with meetings yeah. because those people who are control freaks yeah. feel the need they to can't see that. stuff they can't see what's going on yeah. so they want updates all the time um, <clears throat> and that that is just killing productivity it's killing morale um, and that sense of they still want to do a good job and they're still being held accountable means that they're working late after the meetings are finished yeah. trying to actually do their job <clears throat> so I think this is exacerbated the organisations that really do believe in people and self-organising teams and autonomy and those that don't I've only got so just from my close connections with a company that's been doing Scrum for a while and they've found the whole thing seamless in terms of they had very much a management trusted whatever needs to happen will happen and self-organised basically but it's gone very well this is it. So, so for the benefit of the tape, I've changed to. It seems like an even darker, does uh, stout, stout porter, <laughs> but it's got kind of a, almost a metallic taste. This is a raspberry and uh, raspberry vanilla oh, smell the raspberries. <laughs> it's like a metallic, really smell like kind of a metallic taste. Oh, that's like a dark raspberry. It's like a raspberry cooler. Oh, my nose and that. It's all right though. I can drink that. But no, I think, um, it, like, what was I saying about Scrum Master? So, what's Scrum? You're talking about um, your company. Yeah, so, just, and it's all really smooth. So, when they have put a lot of trust in the, not just Scrum Masters, but the teams that will do what's right, yeah. they've done what's right. But even now, those Scrum Masters, the good ones, I think are starting to notice that it's not quite the same. Yeah. The social, the, the people element, the the human element to the work. You, yeah. you can't, I don't think you can be as effective as Scrum Master if you're not getting some some face-to-face, -face, some um, in-person interaction. No, I can't. And I can't. It frustrates me that I can't come up with an alternative. And I think maybe even now, maybe it's this situation is exacerbated because you can't do that. We, it's harder to do the in-person stuff now. If, if maybe it's given companies the excuse to say, well, maybe we don't need a scrum master all because we can't get yeah. face to face. We can't see the benefit of being face to face. We don't. We don't, we don't need that element of it. Once the team have learned how to run a daily scrum online, why do you need someone there to, to conduct it? Because it's the gaps, isn't it? It's the it's the the parts between the scrums, between the, the meetings, where the scr a, a great scrum master makes their um, gets the credit. I think. Yeah, that's the mileage. Yeah, I mean, what I've it's the thing that's come up in prominence that I never thought I would be promoting is asynchronous communication. <clears throat> it, you just need to do that. Mm. You just, there isn't really another option. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be in meetings all day. Um, and I think from a yeah, from a from a connection perspective, I haven't really yet thought of anything that can replace it. No, because if you if you're looking to get away from a screen, yeah, the only other option is screen or a phone call without a screen. Um, until until you can get the VR, yeah. until you can see them in, in the room, you can put a headset on <clears throat> and you feel like you're there. Someone's got to accelerate that. Maybe that that will be maybe that will be the the uh, the change in technology that will require us to be less. It's really good now. My son's got a VR headset. It is. It's really good. Isn't it? Just with iPhones, isn't it? You can do things with just with. No, but even yeah, yeah, you can. You can yeah. put an iPhone into a headset. Right? Yeah. There we are. So, do we get through four? Yeah. That's all right. Isn't it? Back to the to the good old days of this is how we used to do pub, pubcasts.
Britain Montel yeah, Jordan. Yeah, this is how we do it. It's all separate. <clears throat> so if you'd like to send us a question, please do. Yeah, you can find so us on all good social media channels. We'll try. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to reply to that thread to yeah. let them know that these questions were covered in episode 101. Yes. And then maybe we've, we've got more traction from LinkedIn than we have from Twitter. Yeah. So that will Getting more interaction focus from LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. So yeah, um, follow me and Jeff on LinkedIn or whatever social media pro, um, platform you're using. You can subscribe to the podcast um, podcast on all good podcast providers no, these days terrible ones and some well. terrible ones and then you'll get every single uh, update that we do yep very good there very we good. go mate I've enjoyed my porter I'm on my second can of porter now could be a changed man maybe I'm a I'm a porter convert convert yeah a porter Por- a porter <laughs> so there we are cheers mate cheers see you soon cheers.